Pressing buttons is what makes the video game happen. Moves, abilities, emotes, none of it happens unless you press a button. And some of that is weird as hell. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 weirdest button commands in video games. Starting off with number 10, Devil May Cry 5, put the rocket launcher down. Now there are so many abilities in this game, it's hard to say really which one's the weirdest, but this whole ability or move or whatever it is, is definitely one of the strangest on top of being one of the most hidden. In Devil May Cry 5, when you're playing as Dante, it's possible to get two rocket launchers, which is called the double Kalina Ann. How these things work is pretty straightforward, but there's one ability they have that I had no idea even existed until we started looking for stuff for this list. This move is totally unlisted, but if you hold down the gunslinger style button, Dante will actually stick the bayonet for one of the rocket launchers into the ground and revert back to just using one. If you want to pick it back up again, just walk over to where you left the second one and Dante automatically picks it up. What makes this whole thing so weird is that nothing else works this way. You don't hold down a style button for anything else. And with the move being unlisted, I have no idea how anyone figured it out. I guess it was just luck. And obviously it's also pointless because two rocket launchers is better than one. That said, it's still really cool you can even do it. And that they added this whole little extra mechanic where you can go back and retrieve the rocket launcher when you want to is kind of even cooler. It's all part of the magic of Devil May Cry 5. Uh, there's an unbelievable amount of depth to the combat system. And every time I turn it on, it feels like I'm discovering something new. At number 9, it's GTA 5's Ragdoll button. A very simple but hilarious one. For some reason, in Grand Theft Auto 5, you can, at any moment, turn your character into one of those Tennessee fainting goats and just collapse for no reason. All you have to do is jump in the air and hit R on PC or B on Xbox, and your dude will just hit the ground. And as long as you've got the button held down, they don't get back up again. Unlike a game like Saints Row, where there's an actual game made where your character's pinballed around when you go limp. There's no real reason to do it in GTA 5, but it's hilarious. You probably need to turn on some kind of invincibility cheat to get the most out of this one, because falling a long distance isn't great for your health in this game. And one of the funnier things to do is just rad doll off a mountain and watch your character flop down the side of a cliff. Out of everything we're listing today, this is by far the most straightforward. You just press a button and the character goes floppy. It's weird and it's pointless, but it's also one of the funniest things. So it's perfect for a game like GTA 5 where screwing around is like 90% of the fun. And number eight, Death Stranding's Soothe Baby button. Of course, Death Stranding is on this list. Like, we have to mention it. It's one of the weirdest big budget games of the past few years. Hell, probably just straight up one of the weirdest games of all time. There's so many unusual and oddball things you can do in this game, but for the most part, their context actions are come from items and stuff. But there's just one odd command we can't ignore. The Soothe Baby command. Just the fact that you've got a little baby in a tank strap to your chest is weird enough, but there's actual gameplay tied to it. It's not just there for show. If you do things that upset the baby called BB, it starts to cry. And, and nobody likes a crying baby. Like you've probably played Yoshi's Island before. You know how annoying that can be. So to get BB to calm down, you have to press the soothe baby command and do exactly that. You pick up the baby, rock it back and forth a little bit, and it calms down. What else needs to be said? It's a game about hauling cargo in a strange post-apocalyptic environment while avoiding scavengers and ghosts all while you've got a baby strapped to you that has a whole button dedicated to keeping calm. Death Stranding is a weird as hell game. What more is there to say? At number seven, some weird context commands like pressing X to Jason in Heavy Rain. With contextual actions becoming standard in the last few years, there were definitely some growing pains to get where we are now. For this entry, we wanted to highlight some of the goofier, more ridiculous context commands in the past few years, like the ones that everyone makes fun of and for good reason. What makes these so weird isn't usually the action button, but the context. A big tooltip telling you to do some specific thing, combined with what's supposed to be 
a dramatic moment can come off absolutely ridiculous. Case in point, the entire press X to Jason meme from Heavy Rain. The moment's supposed to be dead serious. It's about a dad losing his kid in the mall and getting increasingly desperate to find him. But the big text that shows a big X and a Jason beside it makes the whole scenario come off as comical, especially if the player just spams the button over and over again. Another pretty infamous example comes from the press X to pay respects from Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Even ignoring the whole Kevin Spacey shaped elephant in the room, this scene that occurs briefly after the intro completely bombs any dramatic weight it's supposed to have with this message. It could have just said press X or whatever, but no, it had that to pay respects part and the rest is history. The last one we want to bring up comes from the opening sequence in Shadow of Mordor. Like remember that part where the game is trying to have a diegetic tutorial but it's just goofy when you near the end you sneak up on your wife to practice a stealth assassination and you get this message while in stealth press x to kiss your wife thanks game for telling me i'm not going to be brutally murdering my wife even though the action is mechanically identical to that the extra text just makes it so goofy and it just doesn't need to be and number six is Dead Rising 2 off the record, the snapshot attack. One highlight of the Dead Rising games is all the goofy things you can do to zombies. You usually start off pretty weak in these games. By the end, you're a zombie wrestling machine that can throw these walkers around with ease. There's some pretty funny stuff you can unlock, like the disembowel move and the zombie walk, but probably the goofiest ability is the snapshot skill. The only game that actually lets you do it is in Dead Rising 2 off the record the alternate version of the second game where you play as Frank West from the first game instead of Chuck Green. To pull off this move, just get up close to a zombie, hold RT, tap the RV button to take a selfie with a zombie and then instantly kill them. The function of the move is basically pointless. By the time you unlock it, you have plenty of other ways to kill zombies faster than this, but it's so goofy that we can't help but really enjoy it. Sure, it's stuff like the zombie walk are both funny and sometimes useful, but if you really want to humiliate a zombie, Zombie, the snapshot move is the way to go. And number five is Mirror's Edge's Fall on Your Back button. It's an unusual one. In um, Mirror's Edge, if you jump and press the quick turn button, you can flip in the air and land on your back. It seems totally pointless, but there actually is a little bit more to it. If you press another button, Faith will give a little up yours hand gesture. The weird thing is this can only be triggered by doing the fall on your back move. So you have to do one pointless move in order to pull off another pointless move. Really, the only point in doing this is to look cool while fleeing from the police. It doesn't help you at all, and actually doing it without getting killed can be fairly tricky, but it's also weirdly satisfying, so eh. At number four, return to Castle Wolfenstein's suicide button. One strange quirk of video games is they sometimes have a button dedicated to dying and that's it. Like in return to Castle Wolfenstein, you can at any point take a cyanide pill just by pressing a button. Hit X and you just immediately die. Considering this is a game where you can save wherever you want, and even if you wanted to restart a section, just loading is faster than committing suicide, so it's basically pointless. Kind of a weird bit of flavor, because you're supposed to be a secret agent in the game. Another game with a suicide pill is Metal Gear Solid 3, but it's specifically an item you use rather than being assigned to a button, so I don't know that it counts. There's a really strange Xbox Live indie game called Battle Block Theater that also had a suicide button. I guess they put it into the game just in in case you got stuck in an unwinnable situation. You hold the button down, your little guy pops like a balloon. As far as suicide buttons in games, at least it's a little more visually interesting. Also faster. And number three is Saints Row the Third's awesome button. This is the game where things really started to get bizarre in the Saints Row franchise. One of the more noticeable additions to the game was the awesome button, a button where if you held it down, made everything more awesome. It was a ridiculous concept, but undeniably entertaining to use. The main things it affected were melee attacks and carjacking, 
normally uh, beating people up and stealing cars. It's pretty standard for an open world game, but if you hold this button down, which is really just the run button, every time you attack someone, you brutalize their nuts in some new ridiculous way, and hijacking cars gets a lot faster and easier. Being able to hijack cars quickly is actually incredibly useful most of the time because it lets you get straight back into the action instead of having to watch your character slowly drag someone out of their car. And the awesome close range attacks are hilarious brutal. It's almost cruel if it wasn't so funny. The whole concept behind this one is weird. It's a button that makes things better, but in practice it pretty much works. The crazy animations are great, they speed up the gameplay in a fun way, and it's just all around a good addition to the franchise that hopefully there's something similar we can use in the Saints Row reboot coming out sometime in 2022. At number two is the Tearaway Finger Button. Created by Media Molecule, the makers of Little Big Planet and Dreams back in 2013, this was a game that was meant to show off the capabilities of the PlayStation Vita, and because of that, they were able to come up with some pretty weird buttons. By far the strangest is the finger button, which is exactly what it sounds like. Sometimes to solve puzzles or screw around, you can press the finger against the touchpad, which makes a finger pop up in the game. It's a button that literally summons a giant finger that you can poke things in the world with. It's completely surreal to see a realistic finger come bursting through the papercraft world of this game, but it's actually a central mechanic in the whole thing. So while it makes sense in the context of the game, just the fact that there's a special button in the game dedicated to make a finger appear is weird and deserves a mention here. And finally, in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, pretty much every Phoenix Wright button command. There have been plenty of weird fighting game characters, and hell, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 already has a lot of them, but few characters can top the absolute weirdness of Phoenix Wright. Now, the Ace Attorney is a fighting game character here, and look at him. Just look at him. Look at his moves. Nothing he does is actually meant to be a physical attack on the enemy. He's either pointing, falling over, or running around, and nothing he does looks like an attack at all. His special moves are just as unusual. The one where he looks around for clues, uh, in another his assistant Mia comes out and falls over. It's physically impossible to not do something weird with this character in the game for the simple reason that he's not a fighting game character at all. His games entirely revolve around cartoon courtroom dramas and I don't think that Phoenix Wright ever even throws a punch in any one of the games. So the fact Capcom made him into a fighting game character is incredible. He's goofy, bizarrely complex, and every button you press from does something mundane, which is also very weird for a fighting game character. That's the main thing that makes his entire character one of the weirdest button commands in video games. This is a character where holding up a piece of paper or shouting objection is considered an attack. In his own game, Phoenix Wright is pretty normal for the most part, but in the over-the-top world of fighting games, taking a guy whose main skill is talking and making him a fighter without giving him any fighting moves is totally crazy in a very entertaining way. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.